Rachel, I've been thinking for such a long time. I'm you getting... thinking of me? No, no, to the contrary. I'm getting a bit tired of the legal industry. Maybe I want to open a gym. Wow, I know you're a man follower, you have six packs, but why do you want to open a gym? Well, it's just maybe to be an inspiration, and in this gym, I'll hire only gay guys. Wait, 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 hold on. You're a lawyer, you should know that in 2024 onwards, you've got to be very careful when you say you only want to hire gay guys. Why do I need to be careful? I mean... Well, the parliament is currently debating the implementation of a new legislation, which is called... You are referring to the workplace fairness legislation? Yes, the workplace fairness legislation. While well, this legislation focuses on preventing discrimination in the workforce. The first thing is that this legislation is currently anticipated to apply to businesses that hire 25 or more employees. Well, I anticipate that I'm having Gay. 10 chains in, the, in Singapore. 10 chains in Singapore? Wow, I want to be your friend. Yes, so then you will probably be hiring more than 25 employees and that will apply to you. What if I then don't say that I'm only hiring gay guys? What if I just think it in my secret dark heart and then I have an open advertisement for straight women, gay women, anybody and then I consider all the interviewees but I know in my heart I will only hire gay guys. Well, Swang, first of all, I need to ask you why do you have such a deep, dark heart? But anyway, the guys who wrote this legislation are a little bit smarter than you. Number one, just to reiterate, it's obviously not correct if you publicly advertise something that says that you're only going to be hiring pretty women, for example. That's a definite no. Number two, in terms of the implementation, even if you only say it in your deep, dark heart, your deep, dark heart produces actions, thoughts and words. And if, for example, the board meeting or the WhatsApp messages that you send to your director says like, hey, you know, the advertisement that was posted, like, please only look out for good looking gay guys, the implementation itself will be considered a form of discrimination. Now, so Swang, you are a dispute lawyer. Yeah? You know what's going to happen if you breach the legislation, right? Yes. Well, first and foremost, the aggrieved employee will have the right to sue the company in the Employment Claims Tribunal for an amount of up to $30,000. Okay. There may be further remedies that the employee can have, which Parliament is now debating. So there could be potentially enforcement action by MOM. Perhaps MOM may send some letters to the company directors to encourage them to take classes in anti-discrimination. Wow. <laughs> so forth. So we may not know. So Swang, we always hear about complaint queens, right? Complaint kings and queens. So there will also be people who will kind of like arbitrarily say that they were discriminated against. So in those instances, how should employers deal with these cases? Under this new workplace fairness legislation, it will be compulsory for employers. Compulsory? Mandatory. Wow. No longer just encouraged. Wow. Mandatory for employers to set up an internal grievance handling process and system. Wow, I need to go for a mental health course now. But, okay, let's take a couple of steps back. What does this grievance handling process actually entail? Well, number one, the company should not be and will not be permitted to engage in retaliatory action against persons who complain of discrimination or harassment. Oh. Retaliatory action can refer to things like wrongfully dismissing the person or even things like disparate or differential uh, promotion decisions. Okay. And secondly, the company must set up a process for anonymously and confidentially handling that grievance complaint. Like a whistleblowing process. Indeed. Now, International Women's Day just took place a few weeks ago and it happens every year. It's something that I care about as a woman in the workforce. So maybe could you share a couple of instances whereby it would be a breach of this legislation to discriminate against women? First and foremost, you, the employer, interviews this woman and you notice that the woman is pregnant. If you then ask the woman, oh, um... You seem to be uh, getting children soon. Uh, what are your plans? Will you be looking more after the children at home? But if you're looking more after the children at home, then how will we have time uh, to work in 
our very fast-paced gym. And then later on, after you ask these questions, you decline to take on the woman. That could, under this new law, potentially be seen as discriminating on the basis of pregnancy status, okay. which is also a protected characteristic. But this is a very fine line, right? Because if the person is pregnant, obviously there are physical limitations the person has, right? And yes. as an employer, I'll be thinking, okay, this will actually be four months off of work duty that I'm not seeing from that person. So how should employers then frame things when you're hiring someone who's potentially pregnant? Well, fortunately for our SME and founder clients, this law has a carve-out. And the carve-out is that it is valid for a company to take into account a protected characteristic such as child-bearing or child-supporting responsibilities in employment decisions so long as there is a reasonable connection between that characteristic requirement and the needs for the job. What are the other things that startup owners and SME owners should be aware of under this new legislation? I mentioned suing in the Employment Claims Tribunal. But before an employee is permitted to sue in the Employment Claims Tribunal, they would have to file a claim in something called TADM. Mm. And when you file a claim called TADM, then the employers will have to attend something called compulsory mediation mm. with the employee. Does this legislation only apply to cases moving forward or can it apply to things that happened before 2024? Legislation normally applies only prospectively, meaning only moving forward. Oh. Generally, Parliament does not legislate for things to be retrospective. So the key takeaways for startup owners and SME owners is one, there will be changes to the Employment Act. Some of the changes include things like parental leave, paternal leave, age, age. And with this new legislation specifically on discrimination, you would want to perhaps either watch our video, which you did, or have a quick scan of MOM's website to understand what this new legislation is about. Number two, it becomes then very important if your company is hiring more than 25 employees to have some sort of policy in place. The policy should state A, how you guys decide who to hire, B, how you guys are going to be dealing with grievances, what's the complaint process, and then C, what's the dismissal process if indeed you guys choose to dismiss someone on grounds which could potentially be seen as discrimination. And finally, in terms of even your dismissal process, you want to be a bit more careful in the way you execute the firing of someone. You can no longer go... You're fired. Yeah, you can't go, you're fired. You have to really rationalize things out and put that in pen and paper. And if you need anything, you know who to call. We hope you enjoyed this video and we will keep a lookout for Swang's Gay Gym. <laughs>